Hey guys, this video will be quite different than what you've seen before. It's a very personal topic and to experience everything again through making a video is kind of therapy for myself, I guess. If you are in a bad, dark place all alone and don't see a way out, if you have to deal with cancer or your friends or family do, then this video is for you. When I went through terrible stuff in life, I was always happy to hear stories from other people who struggled with similar things. Not because I want others to feel bad, but because I felt that I wasn't the only one, that other people struggle with things too and I'm not alone. This is the story of me, how I was diagnosed with bone cancer and how despite all the horrific and traumatizing events that lasted for two years, my life turned around for the better. Two years ago, in January 2020, a growing pain between my shoulders started to irritate me, but it appeared at the same time I had a little lifting incident, so I didn't pay much attention to that. Three months later, at the end of March, I woke up and recognized that my lower body half went numb. I couldn't feel anything from my toes to the belly button. Let me tell you, that was freaking scary. I immediately went to a doctor the same day and she did send me to a professor at the university an hour later. As I arrived, the professor started to ask me many questions and made some tests. He wanted me to stand upright on one foot and close my eyes. As I did, I immediately fell. Conclusion, something was pressing on my nerves and it has happened slowly for a long time, like years. Therefore, my body corrected the numbness with visualization from the eyes. Once those were closed, my body couldn't control the muscles anymore and I just fell down. I went to get an MRT and once I got the results, I was quickly diagnosed with a neuroma, a tumor that was growing and pressing on my nerves. Serious thing, but relatively harmless tumor. 99% chance that it wasn't cancer. It needed to be removed as fast as possible. Once the nerves were completely crushed, they couldn't be repaired and that would ultimately lead to sitting in a wheelchair, not able to walk ever again. Before then, tying slowly. I had to be operated the next day and so I called my mom and went to the hospital. To make things worse, all this happened in the start of the corona pandemic, which meant that I had to take every step from now on alone. No one could come with me to the hospital, no one was allowed to visit and I was in complete isolation, while an infect with the virus would lead to the cancellation of my treatment. The doctors told me what they were going to do. They needed to create a way to get to the spine and remove the tumor that was sitting inside the nerve cord. If they couldn't find an easy way to get there, they would have to drill through the spinal cord. I couldn't sleep at all that night before the operation and when the nurse finally came at the morning, I made my peace and wrote a last message to my loved ones. The procedure lasted six hours and as I woke up, I immediately felt my belly and feet again. I moved everything for a while and was just happy. The feeling didn't last long though. After a little sleep, the doctor came back and told me that the tumor they found while operating wasn't inside the nerve cord. Instead, it was crushing it from the outside, which was a clear indicator for not being a neuroma. While it was good that they didn't have to open the nerve cord, the possibility of cancer was back into the discussion. He told me that he had no idea what they had found and needed to make some tests and research. He was very kind and understanding and a great surgeon. He even managed to save my turtle's tattoo on my back with a perfectly executed scar. I stayed for another week in the hospital alone and one of my closest friends, Andre, called me every single day just to talk to me and calm me down or distract me from my situation and I will never forget that, Andre. Thank you so much. When I was finally allowed to go, I could hold my hatched chickens for the first time. 
they cracked their shells on the day I was operated. It took another four weeks until the hospital had run all the tests and I could come again, but I was not allowed to come with company or emotional support, and so I was sitting there, alone and lost, while I was told that I have a very rare type of bone cancer named Cordoma. He was completely removed and he didn't show any sign of being locally aggressive and destroying nearby cell traits. To put that into perspective, I irreparably lost all the feelings in my left shoulder and left armpit in the general lifetime or life expectation with a Cordoma diagnosis was up to 5 to 10 years if you are extremely lucky. That's some crushing news for a 30 year old young man, let me tell you that. No future goals, no family in sight, no happy ending for me. If I could pick a quote from any movie, I would say that the following is the most representative and, and real. The worst part about cancer isn't what it does to you, but what it does to the people you love. Of all the movies and codes, a stupid Deadpool movie delivers the most real experience. No matter how hard this shit hits you, at one point you can make your peace with your face. But your loved ones can't. They do not want to. And to see how that slowly destroyed them was the worst thing I have ever experienced so far. They were absolutely helpless, crushed. And now I had to be strong, smiling, be cheerful and full of hope for them so that they wouldn't suffer so much about me. The panic attacks came on a daily basis now and nobody saw me crying while I was hiding my pain from the world. Chemotherapy was no option since my kind of cancer was immune to that. In the worst case scenario he would even mutate like a freaking supervillain and get more problematic than before. Why it was nice that I hadn't to go through that horrific experience. It was still a mixed bag because there aren't many tools against cancer and I just lost one of them. So I got the radiation treatment. Six weeks daily radiation through my chest and throat. Every single day. At first it wasn't that bad, but I still had to be isolated and alone. Corona was huge and if I would have got a fever or shown any signs of a cold, they would have actually stopped my treatment and my cancer would be left untreated. I really started to get an incredible fury towards people refusing to wear a mask because they simply didn't like it while I was fighting for my life like so many others. The biggest effects from the radiation hit me after it was finally over. I was just sleeping, losing weight and feeling absolutely miserable. My throat and tongue were fully burnt to a second degree. I had 8 screws and a metal plate in my spine, a wound that still needed to heal and I couldn't stand, sit or lay down for too long. YouTube was my biggest source of distraction. I discovered Gold, and he helped me through my darkest times playing World of Warcraft and hyping everybody up for classic. You're gonna wear that pink helmet and you're gonna like it. Those chromatic boots looking like a goddamn clown with your DPS warrior? That's you. Your fucking face? It's a square. Thanks Zach. I don't think you will ever see this, but I can't express how much that helped me. I even started to play WoW Classic as a warrior, had some awesome adventures and an awful leveling time, bought my first mount, joined a very welcoming guild and we even cleared Ankiraj. And in the meantime I got slowly back into painting miniatures. I feared I couldn't do it anymore, but I was wrong. Nothing was more satisfying than getting a couple of dwarf slayers done. After you thought you wouldn't be able to do it ever again. Sadly, while all these things happened, my current relationship couldn't bear the weight of my fate anymore and it ended. A lot of friends and family turned away at the same time. It is pretty hard to understand 
people with a condition like cancer. We will never be healthy again. Cancer will never be truly gone, at least in our mind. Not a lot of people know what it feels like to be in that situation and I mean they understand for a while and then they want you to do something you can't. Move on. And after a while they stop being understanding. The fear of cancer coming back is something we have to live with on a daily basis. Sometimes the people around you don't want to think about that. They want the old you back, but that person is gone forever. It is hard to support someone going through all of this, but this isn't a process that will last for a couple of months and then you're fine again and back on the road. Cancer and its dramatic consequences will accompany you to the day you die. Some friends can understand and still support, and some can't or just refuse to. That's okay though, that is life. And to this day I am so thankful for every piece of support that I got. If you are watching this and we are not talking anymore, I want you to know that I am still thankful from the bottom of my heart and I will never forget any kind of kindness and support I was shown. In November 2020 I went into a rehabilitation clinic to regain control of my body and mind again and I met some wonderful people of the same age and even younger sharing a similar fate. Two of those have died since then. And I will never forget these wonderful people, way too young to leave. They had to be in isolation too, until the day they died. Imagine being forced to be alone, knowing you are about to die while people outside are protesting against corona precautions because they want to party again and see movies or eat in a restaurant. I tried to not think about it too much and so I was painting all the time. It really helped me to relieve stress, calm down, focus and make some progress on something. Life is in shambles but at least I can get this miniature painted, right? For the whole year 2020 and until late 2021 I was also in the cancer aftercare where I was told that my cancer was coming back and that it's still growing. My neurosurgeon hardly disagreed, but what if he was wrong? Not knowing what actually was the case was the worst. Can I live now or do I have to experience everything again? To this day, I still don't think that I have the strength to go through it all over again. I was traumatized, helpless and alone, overwhelmed and I didn't know where to go or what to do. I felt like there was no end in sight, always fighting for health, understanding from people around me, answers from doctors, money because I couldn't work and against German bureaucracy while at the same time not having any energy or health for it. I wish it hadn't happened in my time to me. But that's not for us to decide. That's not for me to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. What actually happens when you are diagnosed with cancer? Well, a lot of things and feelings are going to overwhelm you. But there are some good things too. Now you know that your time is running out. You know you are most likely going to die sooner than anybody else of your friends. And what do you do when you don't have time? You start making decisions. You reflect your life. How was it? What did I do? What did I accomplish? Was I happy doing so? Which are the people that had a positive influence on my life? And this is the moment when I started to ask myself the real question. Where do I want to go from here? It's the last day of my rehabilitation. I met a girl who shared a similar fate like me. We became friends fast and it didn't take long for me to realize that I just met the love of my life. It's a fucking rehabilitation clinic where I was because of my cancer. I was happy. Again. After all that, against all odds, now we were two people sharing the same fate, fighting together against the world. I traveled across the country to move in a small flat with her very fast. 
no time to spare. She was the one, and this was another chance. And with her on my side, I started to do all the things I didn't do before. No more excuses. No more long working hours, so I can save money for later, only to run into the next fucking problem that divorce at all. No more pushing my dreams behind or dealing with bullshit from other people and family. Since I was a child, I have been told to be very creative, both in breaking rules and drawing stuff. And while I did draw and paint and create stuff for a long time, I always treated painting and art in general as a side quest to calm me down from the daily struggle. I've never thought before about how happy it really makes me to create stuff and why I never treated it as my main quest. That was about to change. At first I set up a dedicated workshop. Then I fulfilled one of my lifetime goals and built my own arcade machine from scratch. We both built our own RC monster trucks, again a childhood dream that was just waiting to be fulfilled. Next up I set up my painting area and I started to draw, create, build and paint anything that came to my mind. And then little Misha joined our family. But he's big now. <laughs> then I found an old picture I draw as a little kid, where I draw the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the game Turtles in Time on the Super Nintendo. I created a diorama based on that and uploaded pictures of the working process to Reddit and Image Girl. And a lot of people really liked it. And that's when it hit me. Writing stories. Learning new skills, painting, engineering, and all these miniatures I bought, I can now put that all into a single hobby, making YouTube videos. After receiving so much content over the years for free from all these great people and creators, maybe I could give something back, even if it's just a tiny little bit. If a single person would paint a model following a tutorial I've made, I would be so happy to provide something useful to the community and hobby I love so much. And oh my god, what a journey it already has been. I met so many wonderful people. The mini painting community as a whole is one of the nicest supportive bunch of people you can possibly meet online. I made some real friends there all over the world and all these things wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the horrible disease. Cancer helped me to enjoy my time, to pay attention to little nice gestures, supportive people and every nice thing I encountered afterwards. It's like the diagnosis made a full break to my life, which wasn't funny before at all. I had to stop, take a deep breath and finally make decisions that make me actually happy to do things I really wanted to do. And I did them and now my life is better than it ever was. So this is my message to you. I didn't see it coming and I was ready to die, but life turned around for the better and it still can for you. So please don't lose hope. Don't stop fighting, find something worth fighting for and put your heart into that. My name is Sergei, this is my mini quest and now it's yours.